I'm so glad you came. How many enjoyed the sunshine yesterday? Yay. Was that good? I think us, our, us Oregonians deserve that, don't you? Of course, are you prepared for the 90 degree weather coming very quickly? I knew it. We were going to go from, from winter right into summer. Forget the spring stuff. So, anyway, have you had a good week? If you've had a stressful week, I want you to remember who's in control, who is our biggest advocate. We were talking about in the Torah portion, yes, in the Torah portion. Remember when the children of Israel came out of Egypt, they went and they went to conquer the land of Canaan, Canaan. Now, a lot of people think that they were kind of overwhelmed the people, but they were the smallest group. Canaan was a huge area with vast armies that knew how to fight. And who were these children of Israel? They were ex-slaves. And you look back in history, you know what they usually fought with? Because they didn't hardly own any swords. They used rocks, sticks, and clubs <laughs> against a, a people that knew how to fight. So do you think the Heavenly Father gave them a wee bit of help to conquer that land? Absolutely. And then the Jericho. Can you imagine, as Rick was sharing this morning, you're in Jericho. And what are their instructions? They're to go around this, this castle, this country, this city. And then the last time they're going to blow the trumpets and the walls fell down. Can you imagine the people up on the walls of Jericho looking down thinking, what are these people doing? Walking around, singing and shouting, praise the Heavenly Father. Who's in charge? No matter what you're going through, remember that your Heavenly Father is watching over you and His arm is never too short to be your conqueror, to be your advocate. We are part of a covenant. And you know what? We already know who wins, don't we? Yep. Amen. We need to walk like winners. We need to hold our heads upright like we are already conquerors. We know that we are relevant how many believe that people who believe in Yeshua are relevant today? We are relevant, and we need to act like we're relevant because we have the nuclear option. You know what our nuclear option is? Our nuclear option is prayer. That's right. Can anything come against you when you are in prayer? No. So if you've had a bad week, use your nuclear option and pray and let the Heavenly Father fight your battles for you. Amen. Whew, what an introduction. That just came over me. Woo. I'm so glad you came. Let's all stand and say hi to somebody. Wrap your loving arms and make sure you say hi to somebody and wish them a wonderful day and smile. Give a nice smell. It's good to see one another.
Amen. Let's come together. Amen. Let's get ready for the Shema. Let's all stand and get ready for the Shema, you friendly bunch of people, you. Let's sing the Shema. Are we ready? Your throat's warmed up. Me, 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 me. <coughs> Shema Yisrael. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you so much for opening up this day to give us an opportunity to worship and praise you and put everything of this world aside. Let us be pleasing unto you, Heavenly Father, in our worship. In Yahushua's mighty name we pray. Amen. Let's have some gentlemen come forward and we'll bless the children. What a great opportunity. Let's have some gentlemen be pillars of the talit. children are so precious, so very precious. Father, a hand. Can we do that? Thank you so much. Amen. And let's remain standing as we prepare our hearts for worship. Come, O house of Jacob, let us walk in the light. Walk in the light. Walk in the light.
Dale um, set us right up. The Spirit is leading our service this morning. He and I did not talk this morning about what we were gonna, how we were going to open the service. Um, and he said almost exactly what I was going to read from Psalm 50. And that is that we are to call upon, Yahweh says to us, call upon me in the Amen. day of distress. Let me rescue you, and then you esteem me. He is our battle. He's the one who fights our battles for us. Amen. Amen. And our job is to esteem him and to praise him. Amen. Amen. Oh, 
Someone have a, a psalm of praise this morning on your lips. Would you speak it forth? Am I late? 
John 3.16, I'm sure we all know it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Mm -hmm. For God so loved the world. Our Heavenly Father loved the world in this way, how he demonstrated it. He gave his only begotten son, Jesus, who gave himself as our sacrificial Passover lamb, so that whoever believes in him believes what he says, what he said, Jesus said about himself, that he is the son of the living God, that whosoever believe in him shall not perish. We have been freed from bondage of sin and death, but have Amen. everlasting life. That means we have life abundant and eternal life with the Heavenly Father. Praise be to only to the glory of God, our Father in heaven, the one true living God. Amen. 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 On that note, your steadfast love, O Lord, extends to the heavens, Amen. your faithfulness to the clouds. Amen. Oh, 
like Yeshua said, nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. stood before creation, eternity in your hand. You spoke the earth into motion, my soul now to stand. You stood before my shoulders my soul now to stand so what can I say the time that we come together and pray, but we would like to do things a little bit differently today. We have a number of people uh, that are sick that are in the hospital. Uh, Terry Stewart is back in the hospital. His uh, uh, sodium level was very low and he has a, an infection that's going on and so we need to be praying for him. Jen, I guess, just got out of the hospital or is in, I'm not sure, uh, but she needs prayer as we as we continue today, and there's a number of people in the building here that need your prayers as well. Uh, Carol, uh, back there, needs, needs our prayers as, uh, as we go through this, uh, some sickness that is going on right now. 
So what I'm going to ask you to do is I'm going to ask you to go ahead and have a seat and be in prayer. And if anybody feels led to pray for these individuals, could you raise your hand and uh, a microphone will be brought to you and you can pray for the individuals as well. And if anybody feels they need to be anointed with oil, please raise your hand also, please. Father, thank you that um, in the last days you say you'll pour your spirit out on all flesh. You also tell us that uh, signs and wonders, miracles and healings will follow those that believe on you, Lord. And I know that everyone here believes in you, God. So we ask that you circumcise our hearts unto you first, God. And I know that you want to show up and you want to show out. So I would ask that you grant the gift of healing to both Terry and Jenny so that you are glorified in this situation, God, and that it would increase the faith of this house, God, our faithfulness towards you, God. So just like in the days of old when there were idols and idolatry, God, you always show up and you show out. So, Father, I just ask you for that. Shed that healing to both of those individuals. Thank you, Father. exist in the diaspora, Heavenly Father, our hearts and our minds are with Israel. I pray that the ongoing revival continues, Heavenly Father, as they begin to realize who their Messiah truly is. And I pray, Heavenly Father, for their protection, Heavenly Father, in all that they do. Give their leadership wisdom, Heavenly Father. Bring their hearts and minds back to their first love, which is you. Heavenly Father, I just pray that you surround that country, even though on every side they have enemies. And yet, to the consternation of their enemies, this land, this country, this nation still exists. For we know, Heavenly Father, that your power is above all things. And we know that our prayers are powerful, Heavenly Father, and we continue to beseech you to watch over that land, our land. Father, we pray, I pray concerning Israel as our President Trump is there, going to be there discussing the issues of that time, Father, and I just pray for his protection while he's there in Israel and the other parts of that country and the world, and that you lay upon him and the people with him the spirit of supplication so they seek your wisdom, even without their total knowledge and understanding that you will have them speak and do your will as you bring forth your prophetic plan. We may not see it all, Father, or we think we do, but we may we don't have the whole picture. That you work your will and that we understand it and will accept what happens. We ask that in the name of your son, Jesus, who walked that territory while he was here. Heavenly Father, I pray too, if there's anyone here that needs a miracle in their life. Heavenly Father, you have never stopped the miracle business, for you are the author of the miracles, Heavenly Father. 
And if there's anyone here this morning with everybody's head bowed, I mean, you need a miracle in your life, just raise your hand. Let the Heavenly Father know that you need a miracle in your life. Thank you. Thank you. Heavenly Father, you know the hearts and the minds of those who raise their hands, Heavenly Father. They need a miracle in their lives. And a miracle is defined by us by something that man has no power over. We have nothing that we can do to alter our circumstances. But Heavenly Father, we know that we call upon you. <laughs> Your arm is never too short. You can, in any way, shape, or form, you please, Heavenly Father, recreate bodies and sinews and tissues. You can give somebody the cattle on a thousand hills, Heavenly Father. You can redefine and encourage new relationships and heal relationships, Heavenly Father. For nothing is beyond you. And we call upon you, Heavenly Father, to reach down with your loving arms and touch those who need a miracle today. We thank you for the miracle you're providing and in the timing that you're providing it for. Thank you for allowing us to call upon your name. Forgive us where we have failed you, Heavenly Father. Create in us a vessel that you could use. And we thank you. What you mean to us and the love that you have for us. In Yahushua Mashiach's name. And we all said, Amen. Um, I was gonna, I was ready to with a sermon to speak, but I don't think I'm gonna do it. There's a. We talked about it this morning, and I want to conti continue to talk about it. Um, if you'll turn with me first to Galatians chapter uh, five, it's Galatians chapter five. I want to talk about um, the fruit of the Spirit here for a minute. As, a, as we look at this, I want to look at, at 5 verse 22. And it says this, it says, but the fruit of the Spirit... Okay, now when we look at that, the fruit of the Spirit is, the fruit means what is being produced by the Spirit, by the, the Ruach HaKodesh. Okay, this has nothing to do with us. Okay, as, as far as what we produce, the Spirit is the one that produces this fruit. Okay, left to us, we would, there's another section we could go to in chapter 5 that shows what we produce when, we, when we're in charge. But it says the, what, the, what is produced by the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faith, gentleness, self-control. Against, the, against these things there is no law. Now, he's not saying that, that there's no law anymore. What he's saying is that if you carry out the acts of the Spirit, you will not be uh, going against the law. So what he's saying is the law is produced, okay, the fulfillment of the law in our lives is produced as we're, we're allowing the Spirit to produce his fruit in our lives. Okay, and you notice that the first one there is love. Now, when we when we look at this word love, and it's defined by uh, by scripture, is the way I want to go. Okay, because to be honest with you, I don't think that we really know what love is on our own. But let's look at this in First Corinthians chapter thirteen. Now, this is entitled "Love, the Superior Way." If I speak human or angelic languages, but do not have love, or love, I am a sounding gong and, or a, a clanging cymbal. I want to stop right there, okay? Because Paul is, is beginning to state something here that we have to understand. 
And what he begins to do is he begins to define what this love is, but he be- begins to do that, okay, by bringing in another, uh, another religious practice, if you will. There was a, in that time in Corinth, in fact, Corinth was, it was a, a filthy place as far as spiritual. It had every major pagan temple. To be called a Corinthian girl was the same thing as being called a prostitute at that time. One of the, things, one of the places, the heathen practices, that they worshipped was they worshipped a bull. And the way that they would summon that bull during their worship time was through cymbals and gongs. And they would clang these, these, these cymbals and these gongs to, to summon this spiritual bull that they worshiped. Now what Paul is saying, just in that first verse, what Paul is saying is that I, if I don't have love, if love is not the base, if love is not what motivates me, then I'm no different than the, the pagan worshipers and their religions. Now this is, this is really, really good because the, the idea is that, that we can't, if, if we can't get in touch with love, we're not in touch with his spirit either. So what, one of the things I think is that we need to find out what this love is. Now listen to this. Verse 2. If I have the gift of prophecy, now listen to me carefully. Where does that gift of prophecy actually come from? If I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so that I can move mountains but do not have love, I'm nothing. If I donate all my goods to feed the poor, And if I give my body in order to boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not envy, is not boastful, and is not conceited. Does not act improperly, is not selfish, is not provoked, and does not keep record of wrongs. Love finds no joy in unrighteousness, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, and hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they'll come to an end. As for languages, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when the perfect one comes, the the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put, I put aside childish things. For now we see indistinctly, as in a mirror, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I will know fully as I am fully known. Now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. This tells me, you know, Yahweh tells us that he gives us a gift. And he said that that gift is irrevocable. He's not going to take it back. Okay? But just because we have that gift doesn't mean that we're operating the way we should. Because he, he distinctly says, unless you have this love, then you're nothing. And he says that to each one of us. I'm not saying it to you. I'm saying it to me too. He said, unless you have this love, it, it comes to nothing. Now, when we look at that whole thing, what it could mean is that, and we can see it today, we'd have to, what, we'd have to set that definition. So let's go to 1 John 3, 3 uh, 16, 17, I think it is. This is how we have come to know love. 
Okay, John is setting a standard here. This is the measurement of love. That, he could have said that. This is what love looks like. He laid his life down for us. Okay, so he set the standard. Yeshua set the standard for what love looks like. And what it looks like is he laid his life down for us. We should also lay our life down for our brothers. I got to, you know, that's, that's pretty heavy saying. Now, I, I realize he's talking about the, uh, uh, physical laying life down, but he's also talking about uh, the, your needs, your everything, your emotions, everything. Because he goes on, if anyone has this, this world's goods and sees his brother in need but closes his eyes to his need, how can God's love reside in him? The question already that begs to be answered is, are we loving each other that way? To where we're laying our life down to, for our brother or sister. To where we're, we're making sure that, that each of our needs are met spiritually and physically. You know, as, as I think about the first century um, assembly. They were together a lot. If you look at, if you look at the gifts, you know, it, it, actually in first, first Corinthians chapter 14, one of these things he tells about is that the, the Ruach uh, works in, a, in an orderly fashion. Okay? But he also talks about in there about some of the gifts, and what he says about those gifts is that really implies that we should know what each other's gifts are. Because one of the things he says, if you're, prof- if you're going to prophesy in another language, he says, but there's not an interpreter, he says, just pray between you and him. Now that implies that you would know who you, whether there was an interpreter there or not. Right? How many of you know what everybody's gift is? Just in cornerstone. How many of you know? How would, we, how would we know what everybody's gift is unless we spend some time praying together and, and being together and fellowshipping together and talking about those gifts? What is your gift? You see what I mean? Fellowship is more than just talking about what happens throughout the week. Fellowship is, is, has, has a lot to do with what's going on with each other, what's going on in our lives spiritually. Let's go to 2 sec, sec Corinthians. Chapter 10. Why don't, why don't we like... How many of you know what your gift is? Three. Wow. Oops. <laughs> Perhaps that's where we should start. <laughs> <laughs> How would you know what somebody else's gift if you don't know your own, right? <laughs> How many of you have ever taken a spiritual gift test? Okay. There's more of you. You didn't learn anything in that class? <laughs> hmm. What, what, do they call, what do they call those books that you could get? Uh, something for dummies? Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> anyway... The point is, is that we, we have to know what each other's gift is. We have to know our own, too. Now, I can see some of your giftings, uh, you know, from, from what you do around here. I can see some of the things that you do, and uh, my brother Don over there, but you talk about a helper. 
Oh, my goodness. He's got the gift of helps all over him. Not only that, he, he likes people. <laughs> he likes me. Go figure. <laughs> I can see some of your gifts. Another one over here is, is my, my brother over here. He loves, he's, he's a helper too. He loves to help people. Some of you are encouragers. You like to encourage people. My wife is, loves, loves that with me. I can go south in a, in a heartbeat, Okay. But my wife comes alongside me and encourages me. She's my helper. She's my encourager. But you know what? These, these are, are, are actually practiced, they're supposed to be practiced out of love. Could it be that the reason that we really don't know anybody's gift is we really don't care after we leave here? We're off to different things. We're off to go do jobs or hide in hiding places or whatever we do, right? (laughs) And we don't really get back around to it until next Sabbath. Some of you, by the way, are interceders. I know that for sure. I feel that one. But you know what? What is more important? These, these first century folks, these peep believers that came into Yeshua, they actually liked being around one another. They didn't, they were, you weren't wasting their time. They knew what was going on. Now, did they, did, were they perfect? No, they had a bunch of squabbles. And, but you know what? The, the elders got together and settled those as they brought them to them, as, as Yahweh led, as the Spirit led. But these, these people loved each other. They cared about each other. In fact, you know what? You look at Jonah, Okay? He was running from Yahweh. And he, he jumped on a ship to get out of Dodge because he didn't want to go preach to those bad boys over there. Now, how many of you, let me ask this, how many of you, when they, when they came to you and their ship was, was, was about to, to sink and everything else, would have said, well, I'm your problem, just go ahead and throw me overboard. Okay, you're laughing, so that one is probably identifying with, right? (laughs) I don't think so. (laughs) Not my ship, right? (laughs) So he says to them, throw me overboard because I am your problem. Now, I have to say, even though he was running from Yahweh, that's a pretty profound way of, of, of knowing what Yahweh really wanted. It also makes me think that he knew Yahweh well enough to know that Yahweh wasn't going to kill him. Although he probably felt like it. I don't know about how many of you would like to sit in the belly of a fish for those days. (laughs) I don't think I would. And then he went and preached to these people and they got saved and then he went and pouted because they got saved. Right? But how many of you are willing to come to that place where it's like, hey, I just want to lay my life down. What can I do for you? What can I do for you? How can, how can I make that happen? Let's get the microphone, let's talk a little bit. And the reason this week has has kind of afforded me 
it, it, I had a huge amount of study. You got a hand back here. I've had a huge amount of study, and what happened was that I did a lot of study, but then I, it directed me somewhere else, and the somewhere else was was to this point where I'm I'm taking a look at at, uh, at, at believers as a whole. And I'm asking the question, why are we not seeing this stuff? Why are we not seeing this happen? And, and why is this being done? What, you know, what's going on? And the question came up is, how much do you guys really love each other? That's, you know, that's what came up with, you, with, with, you, with me. I, uh, I got a chance to spend some time with Don this week, and yes, he does have the gifts of helps running all over him, and he does it from the right motivation. But um, I was in 2 Corinthians chapter 8 this week, and I think this speaks to what you're talking about, Rick. Um, Therefore, as ye abound in everything, in faith and utterance and knowledge and in all diligence, and in your love to us, see that ye abound in this grace also. I speak not by commandment, but by occasion of the forwardness of others to prove the sincerity, the sincerity of your love. For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that thou he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might become rich. And then down here it says, now therefore perform the doing of it, that as there was a readiness to will, so that there may be a performance also out of that which ye have. For if there is first a willing mind, it is accepted according to that a man hath, and not according to that he doesn't have. For I mean not that the other men be eased and ye be burdened, but by an equality, that now at this time your abundance may be a supply for their want, and that their abundance also may be a supply for your want, that there may be equality. As it is written, he that had gathered much had nothing over, and he that had gathered little had no lack. You're part of my lesson, by the way, Um, or part of Yahweh teaching me something. I want to apologize for it. Um, Two or three weeks ago, you broke your glasses or you lost them or something. And I didn't ask you if you needed help getting your glasses. And I apologize for that. Because that should have been one of the immediate things in my mind was we need to get you glasses and make sure you can see. So thank you for the lesson, brother. (laughs) We both had a lesson. Um, staying on your subject of love, um, the Lord took me to the church of Ephesus in Revelation. And he tells them what he has against them is that they have lost their first love. And last night I was talking with some of my sister-in-laws because we all came to the Lord at the same time. There was 18 of us. Um, it was signs and wonders, though, too. <laughs> and... Uh, she says, what, what is the difference here, Carla? Why are you, you are continuing to seek? And that is the answer there. It's the first love, keep asking. And what I have recognized in, I've been in a lot of different churches, a lot of different demo- denominations. And the one thing I see lacking is the commandment that Christ gave, and that was go out and make a disciple. I still have the lady that met me at the altar 32 years ago, discipling me. Every week we stay in contact. We study the word. We talk about what we've learned and we ask, does that sound right? Does that line up? And so it's it's getting to that place, like it says, I'm gonna give my all to him, no matter what the family says, what your friends say or anything, but you hang on to it because it's only his first love that can keep us going. We have no love, but he's the one who gives us that, that gift. I think we're all um, guilty of a societal thing of watching. We like to watch and we cheer on the, the football players and we cheer on, you know, the TV people or whatever. 
whoever we have as those heroes, we sit on the sidelines and we watch. And we do that in churches. And part of it is the expectation that the pastor and the elders are going to be carrying it on and they're going to do the service and we're going to sit and listen. And you know, you worship Yahweh during the singing, but we just sit and listen. And you know, try to take something home to apply it, but mostly we sit and watch. I don't have so much of an observation of myself, but I, you know, when you asked what is your spiritual gift, and I was like, I, I don't know. And I think where that disconnect comes for me is that I'm afraid to pick one out and say I think that's where I'm at because I don't understand necessarily how that scripture blends into today's um, reality. So, I, you know, I, 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 I really can't, I don't know. I mean, that, and that's, that's where I come from with that. I just, you know, use my um, personality and do the best I can, but I don't know what spiritual gift I may have because um, I don't understand the spiritual gifts per se, you know, about what each one is and what it does, and what are the, <clears throat> I don't want to say symptoms, because that makes it sound like, but I am a nurse. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm a nurse. I, that's a word that comes easy for me, but you know. <laughs> I have a symptom. <laughs> <laughs> I have a symptom. Um, you know what I mean? I, I'm, yeah. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm afraid, I, I just don't know how they relate to me personally. Um, so that's kind of where, you know, my disconnect. One of them might be that. music, though, right? Well, yeah, yeah. I, I'm okay with that, but I see that, and I see that as a gift that I give. It also gives back to me the blessing of being able to do that. Yeah, the blessing of. I, I had an experience a couple of weeks ago with somewhat new acquaintance is going through it, a difficult time. Um, some legal issues that she got into, um, and she told me the good, bad, and the ugly. I'm sorry, you know, and I, I just looked at her straight in the face and I said, okay, you've told me the good, bad, and the ugly, and I haven't left, so what can I do for you? And that was the first word that came to my mind, and when I said that, her face was, she said, nobody's ever said that to me before. And, and it but that was a blessing for me to be able to minister to her. But see, it is a blessing way. to us too when we minister to someone. Yeah. But you know what? Another one of your gifts is that you go to places and like things that nobody else would go or like. <laughs> and that's, that even goes back to your job. You know what I mean? <laughs> but let me ask you this. How many people here are really blessed to buy that, those music people in the, that, when they get up? Now let me ask this, does it draw you into worship? Yes. Yes. There's a gift. Mm -hmm. But you know what, this, this one over here, and, and actually I don't know where she is now, but they, they, they have gifts beyond that. Mm -hmm. Ray is an encourager. And she's a prayer, so is Diane. Mm -hmm. The worshiper and the encourager. You know, so when you look at this, they not only have gifts, Lena back there is a prayer and encourager. And so is Craig. That part of their giftings, you know? And so when you look at these people, this one over here, I couldn't believe, how many enjoyed last week? Dorothy, I'm talking about. How many enjoyed last week? Do you realize that she has a huge age range, and I have no idea how she put that together with that huge age range in those kid, kids? She has the ability to, to my, my grandson loves her. She has the ability to keep their attention, and, and they, they're drawn to her. When you saw that happen, I was so amazed by those kids that it was just amazing watching them minister. They ministered to us. It's amazing. But you look at these giftings, and I, I suspect that some of you do know what your giftings are. You just don't view it as that. I think that that's what's going on. Well, your question is, what, you know, 
that hits me. People have asked me that. What is your gift? Well, I can't point out just one. What is my gift at this time? Or I'm constantly growing and changing and, and getting new gifts. And, and in different situations, I have a different gift. It comes... It's multiple, and, 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 and I don't realize, I know that I'm still looking through that glass dimly, and I don't realize my total ability, the gifts that he's given me yet. I'm just learning them. So it's kind of a confusing question. I think the church has made it a confusing question. <laughs> Number one is... You don't hear Paul teaching about this because he said one thing that means everything. He says, imitate me because I imitate Christ. Dorothy has Christ in her. She illuminates it out. And those kids are drawn to Yeshua in her. And that is exactly where we've got to get our mind to is that we believe that they do belong to Yeshua and we are the vessel to carry him out. They're not really... So what comes out is at the time, if you're a willing vessel, he's going to work through you. You'll have prophecy. You'll have healing. I, I have laid hands on people. They've been instantly. I've given messages. But it's not mine. And I don't even look at it as what is your gift. It's what does Christ need at the time? Are you willing to do it? And if we would teach that the more that we love him, the more that we get of him, it is him that comes out in our churches will begin to do what he commanded first. Make disciples so those people can go out and redo and redo. So we have to believe we are not faithful in belief. Listen to, listen to 1 Corinthians 11, or chapter 12, I mean, starting in verse 1. Now concerning what comes from the Spirit, brothers, I do not want you to be unaware. You know, you know that when you were pagans used to be led off uh, to the idols that they could not speak. Therefore, I'm informing you that no one speaking by the spirit of, of Elohim says Yeshua is cursed. And no, no one can say Yeshua is master except by the Holy Spirit. Now, now there are different gifts, but the same spirit There are different ministries, but the same master. And there are different activities, but the same Elohim activates each gift in each person. A demonstration of the, of the Spirit is given to each person to produce what is beneficial. To one is given a message of wisdom through the Spirit. To another, a message of knowledge by the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by one by, by the same spirit. To another, the performing of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, distinguishing between spirits. To another, different kinds of languages. To another, to another, interpretation of languages. But one and the same spirit is active in all of these, distributing to each one as he wills. For as the body is one and has many parts, and all the parts of that body, through, though many, are one body, so also is Messiah. For we were all baptized by one spirit into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether, whether slaves or free, and, and we were all uh, made to drink of one spirit. So the body is not one, but many. If, if the foot should say, because I, I'm not a hand, I don't belong to the body, in spite of this, it, it still belongs to the body. And if the ear uh, should say, because I am not an eye, I don't belong to the body. In spite of this, it still belongs to body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But now Yahweh has placed each one of, of the parts in one body just as he wanted. And if, if, if they, they were all at the same part, where would the body be? Now... There are many parts, yet one body. So, so the eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. Or again, the head say to, to the feet, I don't need you. 
But even more, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker or necessary, and those parts of the body that, that they think to be less honorable, we clothe these with, with great honor, and our un, unpresentable parts have a, a better presentation. But our, perish, our, our presentable parts have no need of clothing. Instead, Yahweh has put the body together, giving greater honor to the less honorable, so that there would be no division in the body, that, that, but the, uh, that the members would have to, the same concern for each other. So if one member suffers, all members suffer with it. If one member is honored, all members rejoice with it. Now you are the body of Messiah and individual members of it. And, and Yahweh has placed these in the, the congregation, first apostles, and he goes on and on. But you know what? The gifts are not for me. That's, my gift is not for me. It's for you. And your gifts are not for you. It's for the rest of us. Yes. It, what, it benefits the whole body. Oh, Ray, did you, did you have something to say? I, I do. Yeah. <laughs> um, I wanted to agree with Grandma Carla because what she said about the gifts of waiting and listening what does he want me to do in this situation? And a gift that you may have never used before may come upon you. There have been times that people have just been told, go, go lay your hand on so-and-so, and they go do it in that moment, and the person is miraculously healed. They may not for 10 years. The spirit may never say to go do that again. And, and then they don't put a little hat on saying, I'm a healer and then running around trying to heal everybody. We need to be waiting on the unction. And then also, the spirit is already in operation, going back to what Dee said about watching. When we're listening, Pam got this message in the night. She didn't know what she was gonna do with it. I thought I was supposed to say something. I had a note, I had the scripture opened up, but when the time came, the spirit said, no, ask if somebody else has the word. She had the word. And so the spirit, we just need to be listening. No glory to us for ever doing the right thing, for me listening or her speaking, but all to him. Amen. That's kind of what I wanted to say, is sometimes you'll operate in a gift that you don't, it's not necessarily your assigned gift. I look at it like I've been an administrator most of my life, so that's one of my giftings. But every job description has always said, and other duties as assigned. Right. <laughs> always. <laughs> so they can throw anything at you. And I think we have the same thing with the Lord. It's other duties as assigned. Just pay attention. He'll tell you. <laughs> the, you know, you kind of, this is like the, the ta-da moment, you know, where you, where you, uh, you realize that, that uh, the Spirit has all these giftings in himself, and so if you have the Spirit, you're kind of like, he chooses what to give you, right, at that moment. Um, so, you know, the, the whole idea is that we're tied together through, through him, through Yeshua, and, this, and the Ruach, the Spirit. So, it's, it's pretty amazing. I love it. Just quickly, I think one of the key elements here is we need to have the desire to want to get involved. And I think that's when one of the biggest challenges we have, we can have all the skills, all the blessings that you can know. And if we're not willing to allow ourselves to be used, put aside our pride, what are the things that may come that may hinder us? We will never become bald. We will never have that blessing that the Heavenly Father will have to go elsewhere. So we need to pray that we have a desire to go forward what he assigns us to do. Have you ever had... Uh, the feeling like you should go pray for somebody that was sick or something and you, you didn't do it because you were afraid that if you prayed some, not, nothing would happen and then you'd be foolish what if you be foolish and it does happen, okay <laughs> you know what I mean so a family that I, I want to say prays together stays together um, or waits together stays together and then it seems like for me in my walk i want to tell everybody really quickly i've seen all of the giftings in operation in a small uh body this was in vancouver and it's a powerful thing everybody's in good health 
everybody was lit up with the same Holy Spirit, and it was one accord. And it's an unstoppable force. It is the true body of the Messiah. I've seen it in just glimpses, and I, so I know it's possible. And we have all of the inheritance of the saints within the saints, within us. And I want to share mine, whatever he's put in me for the edification of his body. That would be my pleasure to do that. But to go along with what Ray was saying, with what was going on up there, when the Spirit laid this on me all week, it became a burden because it was just running through me the whole week. So I came here with this burden. Like, at what point am I supposed to deliver it? I thought, you know, break into the service or what, you know. <laughs> because she was listening, that gave me the opportunity, so now that burden is gone. Okay. So sometimes we have to do our part just so that someone else can do theirs. That's right. I, I, gifts almost never happen independently. Right. It's always, there's a confirmation, there's... doing something we think we're going to feel foolish over doing it maybe we're not going to see it right away but that may open the door for someone to finish up the more important the more important thing is that we do what he says Amen. and you know what of course we want to make sure that what he's saying is is scriptural and is is the right you know according to scripture to do the right thing but the point is is there's some things that we know that we don't have to go look up in the scripture we know what he says right and so if he's telling you to do that, then do it. You know, and keep in mind that he does work in an orderly fashion. So, uh, so just keep, I guess just keep that in mind. It's like Ray and, and Pam worked, how he worked through them to bring about that moment, you know, uh, of, of ministry. Okay. Well, getting back to what you just read about the, the body, and this really comes from, um, the fact that there are no warts on the body. We are all parts of the body. We're not a just a, an add-on piece. And maybe somebody needs to hear that today. You're not a wart. You are meant to be in the body and you have a specific purpose. This, this is what, this is kind of where he takes me sometimes. He he says, well, I know you prepared that. You can do that later, but um, I want you to talk about this today. And the reason that I think that he does that is that he wants, we're living in the days where he wants us to begin to operate according to the Ruach, according to the Spirit. You know, this is going to be the kind of thing where you're going to need to be listening and discerning on what he wants us to do. Because, you know what, when, when we're out in the wilderness and when the enemy is trying to devour us, okay, we're going to be needing to hear that voice and be willing to carry it out, even if it doesn't look the way it should. So, I, I just think it is so awesome that the entire body of Christ, the entire, um, the brides of Christ, all have the greatest gift, mm -hmm. love. And scripture says if we uh, full, are fully surrendered to him and living lives, which is a struggle often in my life. <laughs> but if we are living lives fully surrendered to him, we don't have to worry about it. He'll give it to us as others need it or we need it. But the greatest is love, and we all have that one. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, I know it's, uh, I think about the, what we're talking about. It says if you want to be great in God's kingdom, learn to be the servant, to, to having the heart of a servant. Pam t touched on one of my gifts is when she said, uh, you know, you do it anyway, even if you think you're going to look foolish or stupid. That's one of my gifts that pe people see that I look foolish and stupid all the time, but I'm, <laughs> but I'm still, I'm still loved and I still enjoy life in Yahweh. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, the, you know, the, the truth is, is that um, I, I think that we do get hung up on some of those things sometimes is where I don't know if that he's really telling me to do that. And what if I do it and this doesn't happen? 
um, when we just need to be open to him and, and go do it, you know, just be obedient. You know, I sometimes wonder that we need to have a, a self-audit and find out what do we think defines us? You know, is it what other people think about us define us? Does a scripture define us? Does our Heavenly Father's standards define us? We need to find out what defines us. So if we are secure in who we are in the Heavenly Father, that we don't care about looking silly or doing foolish in front of somebody because it's all about the Heavenly Father's work and the results. So if it means that I'm going to pray for somebody out on the street and I may look stupid or foolish to somebody, who cares because if that person is touched... I have followed along with the Heavenly Father that wanted me to. And what the people think about me passing the car does not define who I am. That is so interesting. He should bring that up, praying on somebody on the street, because I got a witness on something that happened. I was asked to pray for a police officer in Silverton just any time I encountered one. That was my, you know, it laid on me to do that. So I walked around, well, I remember I went into town, I was looking for the opportunity and it didn't come up for months. So I kind of forgot about it until one day I was walking across the street on the same block that, where the police station was. And halfway in the middle of that street, it just hit me. Remember what you're supposed to do. So I'm thinking in those three steps to the sidewalk of ways to get out of it. Well, we practically collided with each other, so there was just no way I was going to get out of it. <laughs> so I, I called the officer, and I, said, I asked him, I said, can I pray for you? And he said, yeah, he agreed with me. So I'm standing on the sidewalk in downtown Silverton with my hand on this police officer, and I'm praying over him. And he said, thank you very much, and we went our separate ways. And so I'm thinking, you know, what was that all about? You know, was, you know what was that for? And I prayed for his protection, the angelic protection for all the police officers there in town to protect mm -hmm. them. Well, a few weeks later, they started having shootings in Dallas and some of these other stations where they were killing the police officers. So it must have been like a prayer of protection just for, from that spirit. Yeah, it's a good idea to play for, pray for uh, police officers. I do whenever I see them. Yeah. Having been a cop, I, I'm sensitive to that, to what's going on. So, um, yeah, those firemen, too. They're, they're, they're a little crazy. They run into to bu burning buildings. But anyway, you know, the, the, but they need our prayers. They need, our, they need the prayers that, of protection over them. So, Anyone else? Or, oh, be back here in a second. Just one thing I wanted to say that was kind of touched on earlier was the fact that when we uh, when we refuse to be ministered to by somebody we're robbing them of the blessing so if somebody wants to come come and pray for you or offer you a they know you have a need and offer you the gift of either the finances or whatever it is we need to be careful to receive that gift and give praise to the Heavenly Father and, and not rob another person of a gift. Speaking of that, um, I have a pastor friend that uh, apparently this little old lady that, that uses a cane came up to him and handed him some money and she said that, that, that the Lord had told her to give him some money and he looked at her and he says, he said, that's okay, you don't have to give me your money. And she took that cane and put it right in his nose and said, <laughs> said you're not going to rob me of a blessing. <laughs> well, before we run out of time, I was so glad that we had that opportunity last Saturday <clears throat> to have Dorothy facilitate such an amazing interaction with the kids to see to see what goes on between you and those kids was just amazing and it was such a blessing to us all and i'm glad i was able to partner with you in a way of taking pictures through the whole thing and i did a little poster board and gave it to dorothy and it's in the classroom also there are duplicates for the parents the family members of pictures of their kids 
photography, I don't want to get philosophical or anything, but it freezes things. And you can look at them, and they don't move. All those little kids, all of a sudden, they, they don't move. You can really look at them. <laughs> and then you look at them later, and you remember what we saw that night. You were so powerful when you were in that session of intercessory prayer. And, and you indicated to the kids, pray for these adults. Yeah. Adults, pray for the children. You need them. They need you. That was one of the best object lessons. I'll never forget it. Art, by the way, freezes time really good. Okay, I, I've seen some of his pictures. Uh, he, he brought back pictures from a, a salmon trip in Alaska. Um, and oh my goodness, it, it was like professional stuff, you know, that you, these uh, guide fishermen guides or whatever could bring back pictures of. It was, they're good. Anyone else? Okay, well, I know that, I know that, um, I, I really am glad that he led us this way today, because I know that, that it, it kind of was something that you guys wanted to talk about too, I think, uh, about what this gifting means and what we're supposed to be doing. Um, and we can do that on, on some other levels too, maybe have some classes on spiritual gifting and you know, kind of give you a start on, on maybe what yours is or at least part of it is and, and kind of show you maybe um, an opening or whatever on how to, how to identify some of the stuff. One of the things that comes up is that we need to look at some of the original languages of what these gifts that are named really mean, okay? because they don't always mean what the English words says that they mean, okay? And so we need to kind of do our, a little bit of research on but what these gifts really mean. Because um, it, it, it could jog you into the place where you go, oh, well, you know what, that is happening. So um, anyway, to do that. How about uh, some announcements? You know, one thing I want to add is we, we all have talents also. The Heavenly Father's given us, and sometimes those talents lead into gifts. If you have a talent to write and somebody needs some help with write, that gives you an opportunity to be use that for helps to help somebody else. So we have talents the Heavenly Father's given us beside the skills, too, that can become from a sterile, spiritual standpoint. I want to share just quickly that uh, David had uh, got an impression from the Heavenly Father, and I think that's very true. He says, and the Heavenly Father wants to silence the noise and the distractions of the world. And the Heavenly Father says, I have much that is very important for you to hear. Ask me, the Heavenly Father, to silence your minds and quiet your spirits to hear my spirit, the Heavenly Father's spirit. And I think that's a very good, wise, thank you, David, for sharing that with me. We still have room for signups for cleaning the assembly. It has been awesome to see those who have signed up already.